sun tracking the solar panel. In this presentation, I hope you learn more about the team and the project we chose for our senior design project. I'll also give you an overview of the design and go over the components that make up the device. We'll also give you results of the project and finish with a demonstration of our working device. So first I'll give you an introduction to the team. I'm Elise and was the fall team lead for the project. I was also in charge of physical components. Caitlin was the spring team lead and she was in charge of Arduino motor programming. Beverly was the webmaster for our project and she was also in charge of Arduino display programming. And Julius was in charge of LabVIEW programming. Our advisors were Dr. Yamai and Dr. Albright was our secondary advisor. And our industrial advisor was Mr. Jeffrey Cook from BPA. They were all very helpful throughout the project, giving us advice and different feedback as we worked with our project. So first of all, I'll give you a little background of why we chose solar. We're all interested in renewable energy and see that it's, an, it's important that the technology continues so that it will become a more readily used power source. Using solar power is still relatively expensive, so it's important to maximize the power output. Tracking is one way to do that, because tracking the sun can in, increase power production by 30 to 40 percent. That's why we're interested in learning about tracking. So I'll give you a little bit of an overview of our project. So it's to be used as a teaching device for Dr. Dillon of the Mechanical Engineering Department. And she wants to use it in her classroom with a halogen light source to show how position can affect output power. And also on the roof of Shiley to track the sun for a day. So this is the overall device um, diagram. And you can see that our device is a, a solar panel that is mounted to a rack that allows it to move three dimensionally. The motor, motor mounted on the shaft on the belt that Caitlin's pointing to allows the panel to move up and down, while the shaft or the motor mounted on the bottom allows the panel to move left and right. Uh, motor movement is controlled by four photoresistors that are mounted on each side of the panel, and our device also has a display for easy viewing of voltage, current, and data or and power, and also connections for LabVIEW for data collection. All right, so Elise just gave you the basic overview of our project, and this is the block diagram that goes with it. Um, throughout the course of the project, my colleagues and I will be coming back to each part as we dive more in depth. All right, so our project has two main functions. One is to sense and track light source, and the other is user interface, which includes display and measurement. Um, in the next few slides, my colleague Julius and I will be talking about how our device senses and tracks light, you have the photoresistor and motor interfacing, as you see in the diagram here. Julius? All right, everybody. So before I get into detail with the photoresistors, I just want to say that photoresistors make the main component of the sensing and tracking of our project. Now, I just want to introduce to you the photoresistor circuitry, which is right here. So first, we have a voltage source supplied by our microcontrollers, the Arduino, which is connected directly onto a photoresistor. After the photoresistor, we have a 100k ohm resistor, which is then fed back into the Arduino for analog read, which Caitlin will talk about in a little bit. Now this is back to the top block diagram. As you can see, our, the input of our system is a light source, in this case a halogen bulb, or outside, the sunlight. Now this light source is fed onto the four photoresistors, which then allows the project to sense the direction of the light source. So photoresistors. What is a photoresistor? A photoresistor is basically a light-depending resistor which indicates the presence or absence of light. Now how it works is, in the absence of light, its, resistor, its resistance excuse me, jumps really high to about 1 mega ohm. Oppositely, in the, in, the, in the presence of light, the resistance drops down to about 1 ohm, depending on the light intensity. Now how we implement this in our project is we use four of them on each side of the panel. And it's, while it's connected in series with the 100k ohm resistor, in the presence of light, the resistance across that 100k ohm resistor is altered. And this voltage is sent through the analog read pins of the microcontroller, which Caitlin will mention in the next slide. And the microcontroller then sends a signal to the motors, telling it to move in the direction of the position of that light source. Caitlin? All right, so now I'm going to talk about the motor and driver interfacing that we used in our project. So we chose to use 5-volt, 4-wire bipolar stepper motors. The four wires, as you can see in green and yellow over there, are separated into pairs and then attached to coils within the motor that, when excited, actually turn the motor shaft. These wires are attached to the pins on the DRV8834 low-voltage stepper motor driver carrier chip, 
as you see right here. The Arduino, as represented by the black box that says microcontroller, sends signals called step and direction that the driver can then translate into electrical pulses that will rotate the motor shaft. We also chose to use gearboxes, as you can see one right here, and then there's another underneath that is attached onto the motor shafts to increase torque at the expense of lowering um, rotations per minute. We needed to use this as we added weight to our panel with the photoresistors, their mountings, and the wires. Now I'll be talking about the motors and the Arduino. So as I mentioned previously, the, driver the drivers for the motor take signals called step for the number of steps that the motors need to rotate, and direction, which would be the direction that the motors need to rotate, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, the library that we chose to use for motor control is called Excel Stepper, which is a user-made Arduino-compatible library that includes some of the functions as you can see here. One, some of the functions that we decided to use that were most important for our use in our project include set max speed and set acceleration, which do exactly as they say. They set max speed and set acceleration for um, turning the, the shaft of the motors. It allowed us to ramp up the speed that allowed for more smooth uh, position changes. We also used a function called current position that kept track of what the Arduino thought that the position angle was. Um, we noticed that we had some trouble with the cord as you see here and a similar one underneath that would get wrapped around the motor shaft. So we needed a way to reset the panel to a zero degree position and we used current position to do that. Some other functions we used are called, where is it, <coughs> distance to go and move to. They kept track of how far you had to go in one stepping period and then again would set a new position to move to. Um, to, for whatever the photoresistors thought that you needed to move to. Speaking of photoresistors, as Julius mentioned earlier, um, it sent information, the photoresistors sent information to the Arduino through, through the analog input pins, and we used a function called analog read that would take any voltage between 0 and 5 volts and convert it into a number between 0 and 1023. And so all these functions were actually very useful in integrating the photores photoresistor information with the motors, the driver, and the Arduino. Now Beth is going to talk about user interface. Thank you, Caitlin. So in the next few slides, Julius and I will focus more on the user interface aspect of, their, of our project. So as we mentioned before, there are two main functions of our device. One, to track and sense a light source. And two, to measure voltage, current, and power and display this measurement to the user. So the user interface, which is powered by a separate Arduino microcontroller, consists of the LCD screen, BNC ports for LabVIEW compatibility, banana jacks to connect a load. And so an important aspect of our user interface is a step-down circuit where measurements are made. In this step-down circuit, we have a voltage divider network of 50 kilo ohms and 2.5 kilo ohm resistors. And the purpose of these resistors is to reduce the voltage input before the Arduino microcontroller or the LabVIEW module makes measurements. That way we can reduce possible damages or reduce the possibility of frying the Arduino microcontroller or the LabVIEW module. So for voltage, what is measured across the 2.5 kilo ohm resistor, this voltage is actually a factor of 1 21st of the original voltage produced by the solar panel. So for example, if the solar panel produces 21 volts, <laughs> the voltage measured across the 2.5 kilo ohm resistor is actually one volt. And then when you connect an external load on the, or on the banana ports, this completes the circuit which allows the load to draw current from the solar panel. This current is measured, or measured through the one ohm precision resistor and the red arrows in this diagram represent the connections of the positive leads that feed into the Arduino microcontroller when measurements are made. And now for the LCD portion of, and its connection to the Arduino. So the LCD displays the current voltage and power measurements to the user as the solar panel tracks the light source. And this LCD is powered by the Arduino. So after the Arduino makes measurements on the step-down circuit, 
It uses the liquid crystal library and the function print to print the data onto the screen. And now I'll hand it over to Julius, who will talk about the second feature of the user interface, LabU compatibility. Awesome, thank you, Beverly. So as Beverly said again, the second main component of our project, of our device, is for data acquisition. Now, as you can see, the light source is then fed to the solar panel, which then feeds onto a set-down circuit, and then directly onto LabVIEW for voltage and current measurements. So LabVIEW, why did we choose, to, why did we choose the software LabVIEW, and what's its purpose? Um, LabVIEW is our client's most preferred software and hardware for data acquisition because it is very popular amongst the mechanical engineers in the mechanical engineering department. Now, its purpose in our project is to measure and gather data, in this case, current and voltage. And what's cool about this software is it allows the user the option to export that recorded data into Microsoft Excel, which then allows them to use it for any, anything in the future. Uh, now, the cartridge we use in this experiment is National Instruments Cartridge 9215, which is really great for voltage and current measurement. Now, again, uh, like Beverly mentioned, we use a step-down circuit to avoid frying this cartridge. And as you can see, that step-down circuit is connected into two BNC ports, which are located right here. And this BNC cord is connected directly to that cartridge that I mentioned was in the previous slide. Now, here's just a recap of the step-down circuit. And sim similarly to the LCD screen, um, the voltage and currents are measured across the same two resistors, 2.5K ohm resistor, which is again measured by a factor of 1 to 21st, and the current, which is measured across the 1 ohm resistor. Now, before the software could gather data from the hardware, the user must first make a VI, or a virtual instrument. Now, this is the voltage VI that I've created. Um, users have the option to edit it if they want to, but I will talk about my created VI. The DAQ assistant, which is located on the far left block, measures data from the cartridge, which in this case, voltage. It sends it through a multiplier, which multiplies it by a constant of 21. Now, if you're wondering why did I put that multiplier in, since we measured the voltage across a 1 to 21st voltage divider circuit, we need to find a way to obtain that actual voltage, which is running across that load. So to obtain the voltage back, we multiply it by a factor of 21. Now, after the multiplier, it is just outputted through a graphical chart. And on your right is a graphical data of voltage that we received from a test source. Now, similarly, the current VI. Again, the DAQ assistant obtains current data from the cartridge. And as you're wondering, we did not put a multiplier in there. And for this reason, it is because that one ohm resistor that we measure current from is not part of that voltage divider circuit. So whatever current we measure from that one ohm resistor is the current of the actual load. Now, similarly, the output of that DAQ assistant is connected to a graphical output chart. And this is another data of current that we received from a test source. And now that we know that LabVIEW works 100%, our next slide will show you some real results. So these are re results we gathered from this beautiful halogen bulb. As you can see from an initial time of zero, there is barely any current or any voltage. And obviously the answer is the light source is not directly facing the solar panel. Now as time goes, you notice that the voltage and current starts to go up just little by little. And this is because our device is tracking that sun, trying to get to the direction of that light source. And as you can see, as it reaches a steady state, and what I mean by steady state is the solar panel stops, the light source is directly above that solar panel, and you can get a maximum voltage and current reading. And this proves that our project is very successful. However, with great success comes great issues, and our next slide is issues. Thank you, Julius. So as Julius said, we will be talking about some of the issues that arose throughout the construction of our project these last few months. Now, originally, our project design called for using 5-volt unipolar motors. However, we found when we put them attach them onto here and below that the panel would only rotate a little bit at certain angles and then down below it would not rotate the panel at all. So we did some research, we found out, okay, bipolar motors are supposed to have more torque, so we put them on there. They helped a little bit, but not enough for what we needed, so we uh, ended up adding gearboxes attached here and below, and it ended up actually moving the panel just the way we needed it to. Beverly? 
An issue we encountered with the user interface is measurement precision. So using a halogen bulb indoors, the solar panel was only able to produce power in the order of milliwatts. Therefore, every millivolt and milliamp of voltage and current became a significant offset in our measurement results. So as a solution, we decided to use precision resistors, which reduced the possibility of unwanted dissipation in our measurements. In addition to that, we also had issues multitasking on a single Arduino. Our initial design called for the two main functions, tracking the solar panel and moving the motors, and just measuring and displaying these results, were all supposed to be controlled by a single microcontroller. However, we found that when we put the code together, these two functions actually hindered the execution of each other. So as a, as a solution, we decided to stick with two separate Arduinos for the two separate functions of our class. Julius. All right, so LabVIEW. Um, the issue I had with LabVIEW is, uh, I already mentioned earlier that LabVIEW is very popular amongst mechanical engineers. Now, for electrical engineers, on the other hand, we never, ever use LabVIEW. Um, so my solution for this was that first, uh, our client, Dr. Dylan, gave me a manual, which was a three-hour tutorial. Uh, did not help at all. Um, sorry, Dr. Dylan. But anyway, uh, so my solution to this was to do personal research on my own time. And uh, in addition to that, the most helpful resource for research was YouTube. I actually had to watch some LabVIEW guides made by other users, and that definitely solved the problem. Okay, so now Caitlin's going to show the device in action. It's going to use this halogen light source. So first we connect our external load, which in this case is a power resistor, which dissipates the power that we collect from the solar panel in the form of heat. So Julius and I are connected to the banana jack. Track a normal like <coughs> light source above, and it will go to that. Um, 
for the keeping it steady as you go farther back is a little bit harder to keep it steady, but that's a very easy thing to change in the code of just like one number. So it does work. <laughs> we did find that the power production outside is significantly greater than the power production inside. And so indoors, I think the maximum power production we were getting was one watt, and then outdoors we were getting about two, three watts. Okay. Uh, so I've seen uh, a lot of time-lapse videos on similar systems outside, and uh, one problem you get there that you might not see in the lab is when clouds go over, uh, the bright edges of the clouds are often as brighter and brighter than the sun for a period of time. It seems like the motors would then adjust to follow the cloud for a bit, and at very least move it back and forth so it wouldn't be uh, just moving with the, the sun uh, and you'd be using up electricity with the, the motors going back and forth. Have you thought about maybe including a, a lag time to where it, it doesn't just shake back and forth? It seems like the motors there were moving pretty quickly, which might actually be a disadvantage uh, to, to track everything that's bright even for a couple seconds. Uh, the other way you might uh, think about that is if you thought about just uh, figuring out how to calculate the ephemeris state of where the sun should be in the sky. You only need four variables to do it, latitude, longitude, time of day, and day of the year. Uh, for the latter part of your question, um, that, that was an option that was presented to us, but our advisor, or, sorry, not our advisor, our client also wanted to use it inside as a lab demonstration to be able to use with any light source, so hence the reason we use photoresistors for that. Um, no, for the first part of your question, no, we did not think about um, clouds and how the edges are brighter. We never had the opportunity to test that part of it, but um, at least I know for the the bottom part of the motors, they, the gears that we use have such a high turn ratio that I think they would probably spin a lot slower, so perhaps, but that would probably involve more testing. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I Going once, going twice, sold. Thank you.